is again, we're out in the dead area too. So uh, we're on our way. One of our guys had a flat tire. Uh, those uh, gift cards, one of them's a MasterCard, and we got Visa gift cards. Uh, we're gonna be able to take them out. We're gonna get its tire fixed. Uh, we're gonna pick up some more infrastructure. We're gonna take the teams out shopping. Uh, gotta go uh, visit our family out there in Bravo. Make sure everything's going good out there. There are teens actively searching. Literally. We got a vet in his battle buddy. The first thing he did was jumped up. He jumped up. He went and hit the wall. And he already found stuff. And he's going to be sending pictures. Um, we got some very good, very, I mean, we got some people that are really smart. And they know this entire area. And they're like, they're like, I don't know, they're like bloodhounds, man. <laughs> you tell them to go search a grid and they're just finding every single corridor. Now remember, we're going east to west once we build this wall. Okay, we're not going north to south just yet. We're going to be going north to south in staggered positions, but we're going to be going east to west so we can build a blanket wall across our state to prevent any child sex trafficking or human trafficking from coming up or out of our country. We want to make sure they're not taking our kids down there to do sick shit down there, and we want to make sure they're not hurting kids and doing sick shit to their kids up here. Either way, it's a win-win. All children are going to be protected. Anyone who's being trafficked is going to be sought for. And until the government comes out with a report and says there's no human child sex trafficking going on on the border, until they come out with a report, we're going to stay out here. Because their own report says it's happening. Anyone who says it isn't, well, then I guess they're calling the government a liar, too. I mean, I know the government's saying it's not happening, but in the reports it is. It gets a little confusing, guys. That's because that's the, the devil does. He clouds. He clouds. And yesterday morning... Everybody was just like beat, beat down the team. They're like, oh man, Lewis, they're, they're saying all this shit about you. They're lying on you. They're doing this, they're doing that. You know, and we just keep going. Devil's just trying to hammer. And then next thing you know, or how our night end? Our night ended last night. Phenomenal. You know, we had like six new people come out and get ready. I mean, there are people coming from all over. And it, we're blessed because the more people that comes, we can send you out. You're going to be busy. The only time you really got to hunker down is during the heat of the day, but we got teams that we go out during those times of the day, whenever possible, just to make sure that they're not moving either. So, um, let's see, someone record. We do have someone recording each video, so. It Last slide feed says no one. We were coming out of dead end, too. Mama P. Mama P's on. Tell Mama hi. Hi, Mama. Mama's on. Mama P's watching. Hi. Oh, sorry. Anyways, Mama P, uh, I love you. you know who's down here, too. So, if those of you guys don't know Mama P, that's Jeremiah Pulaski's mama. That's my mama. That's all of our mamas. So, you go make sure you show her a lot of respect and give her love. We don't care what Facebook's doing. There's enough going on here. Um, it, it, like literally, God's going to God's going to give us exactly what we need. So we don't want people to worry about Facebook. Let Facebook censor. The devil's going to try to silence stuff in areas, and he's going to try to throw out a bunch of lies and other stuff to sensationalize a lie and not the truth. To get everybody looking left when they should be looking right. That's what's going to happen. So Facebook's can only censor so much. Hey Vanessa, we love you too. Ness is one of our uh, camp ambassadors. We do have dogs coming out. Uh, we do have uh, we do have other things, but some people are waiting to take a sit back and see because they're like, "Oh, Lewis, the media's slamming you." So we'll let those individuals just wait and see. Our opinion is, personally, mine personally is, if you're making this about me, you're a piece of shit because there's little kids still being trafficked through these corridors. And if you're not out here to help us find them and track them, then you're part of the problem. And if you're part of the problem, we don't have no time for you. And, and simple as that. So, we ain't got the ability to stop all the illegal immigration. We're disrupting and doing, we're, we're, we're doing a good job right now is what we're doing. Hey, Heather. Heather's one of our Boots Online people. Psalms 91, that's right. Psalms, Psalms 35 for them. Major Harris is on. How's it going, James? He's commanding Bravo camp right now. Uh, listen, um, we never found Catton yet, for those that are asking about the dog. But the one dog who ever sent the stuff from QT, that is Athena. 
So their uh, team's going to go over to get Athena out of the shelter and take her out to BG. Uh, right now, um, Solo's been posted up for, uh, what, I think three days now. He's been posted up for three days, three nights. So we're going to extract Solo out of that camp today. He's been watching over that woman. We have some people that are coming in that can just park around that wash with their trucks and just they ain't got nothing to do they're disabled so they can hang out and watch over that area for us all night and we've already got a pretty good presence in there because it's right by where that child is that we still got heavy presence uh, in certain on certain areas and certain properties that are going along corridors and we are looking for signs god says it revealed signs and there are signs there are signs right in front of your face there are little signs all over the place that are right in front of your face so we're following the signs news on the skull they said that that skull i don't they said within a few hours that that skull belonged to an adult but we know the small some of these immigrants and everyone that's crossing the guatemalans are small and everything but no if we thought that for a second we wouldn't be like literally we're only about uh 10 minutes from where that skull was found they said we planted it that was still decomposing that was like as small as my daughter's head if not smaller so they have been finding some dead cattle but that's not a normal thing we're going through a big drought this time of year i like really the water's been kind of scarce down here so they have been finding that and uh but uh, we don't see no major the thing that's been concerning us is all these fires there have been multiple fires all around in washes and deserts all around our city since we discovered that sex camp. All right, there have been multiple fires just popping up. Now we are, this time, we have dry year. We put out a homeless campfire a uh, week before uh, we found this sex camp. Our own team did. We got a 10 minute video of us fighting this fire in a wash and we put it out. The fire, no one else would have came there. If we wouldn't have got that fire put out, and we do got that 10 minute video. These fires do happen. But we're having fires. You had a fire happen right by a cement, me CMEX property that we were just getting out there. We were going to get ready to get out there to go and tour. But we're bouncing all over the place. Well, then you have a fire. Then that's not, you know, there's just, maybe they're coincidence. But when you start seeing little fires pop up in different patterns, when you start seeing certain people acting scared, uh, when you, there's just a lot of other things when, that's going on. So, um, yeah, everything we're seeing is we're right on the they're panicking, so we're doing a good job. Yeah, Captain was microchip, but if someone finds him, the shelter will get her first. They'll get her back to us. It, it is, uh, No, just so you know, who cares what people are saying about that skull? All right. First off, I wasn't the one that found it. Some like uh, another one of our SAR teams did. I was over searching in another area. Second off, I did get down face to face with it to try to get a good picture with the camera, and I could smell, and you could still see the juices and everything. This thing was still decomposing. But if you guys want to find bodies, and yeah, uh, we could do that all day. They're kind of in a pickle out here. We can go out here every day and find dead bodies. There are dead bodies all over this desert of migrants crossing through. We're right in a corridor where they're trying to sneak up and there's not a lot of water in between here and there. So they know that people are dying all over the desert, but they're, they're not spending any forensics on it to make sure that we're not having little kids dumped out here mixed in with the migrants. That locals, that some mass murderer isn't out here and he ain't killing somebody and he's thumping, dumping the bodies with the migrants because the authorities, they treat them all as if, oh, they're just migrants crossing. They're not doing any real forensics. They're not doing any real investigation. They're not doing anything. They just chalk those bones up, throw them in a skull or throw them in an evidence locker and boom, that's it. So we're gonna try to do, uh, like we literally can't go out here. We were discussing that, but that's for another time. If people wanna challenge us on that, we can just go out and we can find skulls and bones all over this place. All we gotta do is follow the quarters. When they get lost off their track, they die. When they get turned off their water run, they die. Which is why while we're disrupting all this feeds, we want to have our teams out there, make sure that we have water. Look, we, ain't going, we don't want no one dying in the desert. We don't want no one dying in the desert, period. <clears throat> we don't want people dying out here. But if bad guys try to hurt someone or bad guys, look, that's, that's a different story. That's uh, I let God sort that out. But we don't want people dying in the desert. 
we come across migrants, you bet your ass we're going to feed them. We're going to give them water, the drug mules, and everything else. All you guys, you guys are going over to BP. The ones that the ones that are being victimized, the ones that are being abused and tracked. They, if they've been raped along these trails, we're going to protect them. Period. I think they've already paid a price to come over here. I think they've already suffered enough if they're being trafficked through these corridors. Those if they are, but it's when we catch them and release them. When they're being trafficked through these corridors, when they're being beaten on, and when they're being tied to trees and raped, because these guys just get lonely and bored. And just about every one of these stash spots you see, penthouse or playboys or something like that. And it's just a perversion that gets worse. Yeah, I do believe the woman with the, we found a plane ticket out there. Uh, one, that, that lady was safe. I think uh, our staff, there's another one. Um, we have some, I think it's you know, luggage, luggage tags or something. I don't know. We got a great team. They're going through with that. And uh, throughout this week coming up, we're going to be setting up. And then we're going to be setting up just different areas where evidence, where we're going to take pictures, go through with the live video of evidence that's been set out, tagged. They're doing the chain of custody and everything. And then we're going to want these pictures shared all over, all over. See if anyone missing children can identify some of these items. And we got, and then we're just going to keep going. And remember, if you know someone and, and you know families in Arizona and stuff, we've had a lot come out. We're telling them to tell everyone else, you know, come out and talk to us, uh, especially if you're missing a small child, uh, like a toddler, you know, uh, maybe a little girl or boy up to like the age of probably, a, I'd say seven, eight, like around there is pretty pretty good ballpark considering all the shoes and clothing and everything that we got so uh, yes we've been checking out areas in Tucson we've done a search and rescue in the city of Tucson for homeless veterans for almost three years we know the homeless camps I know what a homeless camp is that's our job we go out to the homeless camps our job is to find the homeless camps our job is to go find the veterans and a lot of the veterans that we pulled in you can go talk to them in Bravo. They tell people they're way off, they're way remote, they're way off the beaten path. But we already got veterans all around our city that want to stay homeless. And guess what? They're part of our HISN network, our Human Intelligence Security Network. Yeah, we do got a bunch of homeless trolls people. No, we got homeless people that we've been taking care of. We got veterans that are right off in areas where people, they coyotes don't even see these guys when they're coming through. One of our main sources that we fact checked that had all this information correct about that sex camp and how to flush out Mr. Cowboy Pervert who did it was a homeless veteran. You know? So, I mean, there's homeless veterans all over the place. And they're remembered, there were two homeless veterans out there. So, uh, let's see. We're using drones for multiple reasons. When our search teams go out and I put them in these grids, look, a lot of our guys are green. They don't know how to go out and search. They don't know that they lose their bearings. One of the things we do is our rally point, we launch our drone straight up in the air from our rally point and you hang a red shirt, white, whatever we need for visibility. And then everybody that's down in this valley can look up in the sky and that's their landmark. That means you get over to the rally point. We use our drones to scout ahead into when we're getting into certain areas where it's isolated and there's been reports of gunshots when BP, when Border Patrol's been fired at. Because their protocol is usually once they're fired, they uh, just uh, turn around and leave. Especially if they don't have um, a bunch of support down here. Well, we want those drones to go in those areas ahead of us to scout for their scout positions. We've got an infrared and IR camera that's going to be getting, uh, we got someone sending to us, they were looking it up. And we're going to probably want to get about three, four more of these. And people send down drones. Because every drone, we can send out a 20-man team in one direction with every drone. Uh, but at nighttime, we'll be able to fly over these little IRs right over their trails. And then we're going to be able to go up in these mountains where they're posted up that no one else wants to go to. And guess what? We're going to be able to go up and put a heat sensor right on that body, find out what are these peaks they're using. And then we're going up there. We're going to march up the peak with about 50 freaking people, everyone packing gear up there because the team that's going to be dropped is going to need to be able to be self-sustained. And then we're going to drop our own team. We're going to take those heights. Unless they're going to have 30 people lined up there with guns, which they don't, their one single south is going to be running like a little chicken shit when they see 20, 30 people marching up that mountain with gear bags. We're going to take these heights from these spotters. These ranchers aren't going to be coming up and pointing up to us anymore saying, well, they got, they got the cartels on that mountain, and they got spotters over there on that mountain. Nope. They're going to be coming up thanking us, saying, hey, man, there's an American flag on that mountain. 
American flag on that mountain. We're going to put American flags with spotlights right where these cartels are putting their scouts out. And when they're coming down the valley, they're not going to have a scout up there watching. They're going to look up and see that American flag, and guess what? Oh, they're going to divert. They're going to have to because we're going to have a team up ahead waiting for them. And we're going to divert them. And we're going to do our best to divert all the drugs, the dope mules. We're going to divert all those in the BP and the border teams. We don't want those. We're using those to track and push out to get to the human trafficking corridor. So that's what we're going to be doing. That's our plan. All right. If people want to come down here and chase dope deal or dope dope mules, you can do it all day. They're running nonstop. We're coming down to get the most evil thing going on right now in our state along this border. Little children being transported back and forth. Little children being tied to trees and raped, and not just little children, women. And these coyotes are sick, man. They'll tie a six-year-old woman to a freaking tree. They are. They're sick. You're talking about an evil perversion that's just crossing through and is coming up our state like crazy. We got, well, we're going to verify and pack check a rape tree, and we're going to take a team out. We're going into this place just off the coordinates. Uh, we'll be doing that. We're not going to say when, but we are going to be doing that, and you're going to be seeing this week. Now, this would be, if we got a rape tree, you're going to see a live video. You're going to see all that right away. If the area is clear and we can't find it, all right, well, we can't find it. We're, are we going to spend a bunch of our time looking for it? The rancher, we got pretty good coordinates from them. We know where to look. We got drones. But like I said, we'll tell you what we're being reported on. And then we'll come back and say whether or not it's a fact. And we'll get out there and get the facts. Uh, monsoon season, uh, well, we'll be coming up on it soon. We'll have storms coming. But we, we do this. We, we're okay. The, those of us that are, um, remember, the largest part of our force we have are like almost 200 something Tucsonians. And we got people that come down from, I'm just talking in, in our church, in our ministry, we got over 200 boots to ground Tucsonians. People that'll come mobilized through Bravo or Alpha that can't come out even if they can come for a day or a two or an hour or they'll just drop supplies, they'll transport cross state for us. We have a very good, solid volunteer force. So even if the rest of the world kept believing all this bullshit the media says, and they got distracted or they went off or they were looking for some excuse so they can keep being a chicken shit because all you got is people looking for excuses not to come down here and find these kids. They're looking for excuses. That, oh, no, the cartel's too scary. You know? Oh, no, 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 whatever. My God's a lot more powerful than him. Get that through your head. He's really smart. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. He's diverting me left and right. Don't think every one of my plans are going through. I listen to him. I definitely listen to him. I know we need him out here. He's our only real protection. He's going to be our only real protection because he's the one that's showing us everything. And the only way we can have protection is vindication and to have the truth so big that they can't deny and hide and lie about it no more. And the media, you don't see all these stories. Look, there are look for all the human trafficking victims. Start putting their stories on the air. That's what the media should be doing. Look for all these moms and dads and the people we lost. A, we lose a veteran to suicide every hour. Why don't you put our gold star families? Why don't you put them on the media every day? Why doesn't the media put all the evil shit that's going on in our country on the news every day? But they want to talk about who's tweeting what, who's saying what, who's sleeping with who. They got America and the rest of the world. They're just looking around. Well, I don't know. We got more people across the world. I'm talking, just so you know, we got confirmation. We got guys coming flying in from Australia. You know, they're not going to be able to stay along, but they got their flights booked and they're coming in. You know, they can hump in a desert. So we want people that can go out here with us. I mean, we got people that are flying in from other countries to come down here. And you're going to see them come down here. You're going to see them out in the field. You're going, you're going to see them do good things. And then my prayer is that God, all of my teams that go out there, God, let them find something. You keep that fire. You keep that fire in them. We know what's going on, otherwise we wouldn't be out here. But let him keep finding something. Let him find something. You know, and, and, and he's going to do it. God, God's got this. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, dry lips, split lip. Yeah, it, it's a desert, guys. It, it happens. It's fine. It'll heal in a couple days. Going through. Smitty Michael, you guys are coming. Come. Come on down. 350,000 missing children last year alone. 
Look, we got, listen, we are leaving signs. We're not just leaving signs. We're also setting up points. We can't go and discuss everything we do. Otherwise, we're, we're screwed. We can only talk about so much. Uh, and we have to use this social media platform knowing they're watching very smart. So, there are things that are going play. So, just, you're going to have to be patient. You're going to have to be patient. But there's, we're, we, you're going to have to be patient. But you'll see, yeah, we're, we're doing a lot of your guys' ideas just in different ways. Well, do we need, uh, mainly bodies, man. Anybody that comes in. There's people, if you're planning on a vacation, tell you what, come out to the Arizona deserts. Come vacation out here. You know, we need just main bodies. We got veterans and prior law enforcement. There are certain groups that I'm going to allow, that, that they're going to basically take over the security side. You know, we need bodies. My team, our guys, we need bodies down here beating feet in these deserts, going through these washes, tracking. We need to have heavy presence in all these different corridors. So that takes bodies. And, you know, and then we want, like, when we get it tuned down and have, like, sit around for a few hours. Last night was great because, you know, everybody gets to sit down. They get to talk. We're out in the middle of a desert, guys. We're looking up at these stars. It's so beautiful. So beautiful. People just laying back on their cots, sleeping under the stars, watching shooting stars. You know, there, there's, a, there's so much beauty down here. And we find that time to find the beauty within this. We didn't ask for this fight. But there's a lot of nasty, evil shit. So we're just trying to take any beauty we can and just absorb that as we're moving forward. But there's there's so much, there's so many good things happening. And for us, for us at VOP, this is even better because while we're making a huge difference and, and stopping this and disrupting their trails and sniffing them out, pretty soon they're gonna run out of trails and we're gonna keep hopping from one trail to the next and squeezing them over and squeezing them over. Then we're gonna get to where they're doing the bodies. Then we're gonna get to where they're trafficking the humans. Those are the trails that aren't being monitored by BP. Those are the trails that no one in the government down here wants to go to because they're in dark canyons. And they're No, no, guess what? Then we're just going to have to go into the canyons. And we're going to have to make sure that they can't use them to smuggle women and children. Now, the rancher said in this area, just so you know, that they haven't seen children come across the border. That they usually do. They use a different route for the kids because the kids wouldn't survive the desert. But women, oh yeah, well, women or men, you're gonna be marched. If you're a woman, you're gonna be a tied to a tree and raped. But uh, they'll get you up here, you know? And then if you get the rest of your money and you pay them, then they'll release your kid from one of these little underground bunkers. And then, hey, it's all good. Now you gotta worry about the government and ICE and everyone else who just allowed you to be tortured and abused because they've got a porous open border that no one's doing anything about but talking. And there are people suffering, so. You come down in two weeks, three, we're not gonna be going anywhere. We're on private property. We're on private property. We're not in no standoff. There's not one complaint against our group. There's no complaints against our group. There's no one that can stop us. We're a church. We can go out on private property and we can walk our public lands and search all we want. There is no law that can prevent us from acting as private citizens. And I do keep our law enforcement and our city comprised of what we're doing. I do. You see me go live videos. I go run up and I'll talk to TPD. I let uh, Ward 5 know, you know, I let our city know, you know, haven't heard much from, uh, it's been weird, but ever since we found that camp, there's just been, it's a good thing our churches are stepping up because some of the local authorities, some of these, uh, certain individuals in our city, they got real quiet and where they were always cheering for us, all of a sudden they got real quiet and we're trying to wonder why they got quiet. We have ideas of why they're being quiet right now, but we don't have to speculate too much. Yeah, if you guys know how to ride horses, we got we got a bunch of people out here with horses. Well, the reservation, we have people that are uh, volunteering and they actually, uh, that come out, they saw that sex camp. They know what that sex camp is. And the thing is, is we are so blessed. We had so many from the reservation that already crossed through that came through. You saw some of those guys on live video. There's a guy, that, that native that was on live video talking about the guy who built it and how he had four dogs posted up there and wouldn't let no one go back into that camp. And he's standing there with a gun. That's probably because he had, no, it's not probably, he had some little kids tied to that tree back there or he's watching over some little kid that's going to be worth a lot of money to somebody. You're going to go and uh, supplies are being mailed to 
You can either drop them up at our UPS store. Uh, you can go out, you can go in there and talk to Michelle and them. Those gals are great, um, and they're doing everything again we can, they can. We have locals um, instead of mailing it, and they can't get all the way down to Bravo. They'll swing through. They'll drop off stuff that we need, and then the store will hold it for us till we go get our mail. But you can mail stuff, or you can just bring it down to Bravo Base. We're having all the supplies and infrastructure go through Bravo Base before it hits Alpha. And yes, I am letting our homeless veterans that are in that camp grab things they need before it gets out to us as long as it's not an immediate need. There's a lot of cool stuff they wish they could get right now, but I said, well, wait till our teams are outfitted. Because if we don't need it, we're not taking it. So you guys use it. And guess what? If you don't need it and once you guys have it, then I want you to give it to the homeless people in the park. Let's make sure they got good gear. They're living out here in this crap. Let's make sure they got good tents. So everything's going to be trickled down to the people that need it. And no one's going to be in the middle taking money, getting paid, or none of that nonsense. This is an all-volunteer job. We'll take care of you as best as we can. We're getting a tire fix for one of our guys, you know. We're keeping their gas filled. Uh, we got one of our volunteers, their phone bill paid yesterday for their monthly pre-play pan. We'll do everything we can to keep our volunteers comfortable and uh, make sure their basic needs are met. But no one's raising money off this. You don't need money. We don't, when the group's knowing coming down, we don't need money. We got people. People are more powerful than money. And we got God. So trust me, he rains manna from the heavens every day. We don't have to stockpile and hoard crap. That shit's just going to spoil overnight, man. We ain't got to worry about that. Every blessing that we got that we don't need needs to go out to the poor in our city, the homeless in our city. We just want to make sure our teams are outfitted, and then we got bags built, and when people come down, we want to make sure you got equipment. A lot of people coming out don't have good lights and things like that. Well, now they do. Like, literally, I think we've had almost 100-something flashlights of different brands come through. Battery pack chargers. A lot of people don't have those. Well, now they do. I think we got, like, 20-something. So, I mean, like, literally... You send us supplies because anything that's not needed isn't going to be stored. We're not going to let any groups build their own little prepper stockpiles. No, no. It's all going to be donated to the homeless. So while you see us out here in the desert beating feet, pushing back the bad guys, sniffing out the enemy, yanking little kids out of tunnels, you're going to see that. I mean, we have no doubt that we're going to come across and we're going to save a camp full of women and kids being trafficked. We have no doubt because it happens all the time. The government even says so. They're not lying, are they? So everything else you're going to see, Bravo team's going to be handing it out to the homeless in Tucson. And our, you know what? And maybe the homeless vets across America are going to know about Bravo base. And they're going to know they don't have to be chased out of tunnels and bridges and everything else by uh, local authorities. And they can come down and we got, a, we got a spot for them. You know, we got a spot for them. So you let, if you see a homeless veteran, you let them know. They go down to Bravo. Have them contact our teams. Our families will do everything we can to try to get them down there. You know, they, they help with bus pat, bus tickets. Uh, we've flown people in. We've had veterans come from, like, over 30-something states right now in our country that's come down through our program, our shelter. We are so established. We have people that are everywhere. If you look at um, the way God blessed us at Hurricane Harvey and then when we ran Operation Irma Shield, we have Texans galore. You're not going to be able to convince our Texas allies that this isn't real. They got border issues, too. You're not going to be able to convince our Georgia and Florida families and our people down in Puerto Rico. you got to remember, VOP Navy had teams, and they gave it all the way down to Puerto Rico. And they're led by a Marine, female Marine. They just call her Tori. She's a badass, you know. We planted great seeds all across this entire country. So there's nothing anyone's going to be able to do. Our stronghold is solid. You can't turn churches against our church. We're all united. You're not going to turn, turn neighbor against a neighbor here in Tucson. The naysayers here are very few because they get shown time and time again. They get tired of being proved wrong. They get tired of being caught in lies. Um, I'm going to be going through and uh, getting something today that's very important. So we're going to deal with those distractions in our own way. We don't want no one else worrying about them. We've got some stuff. And then we're going to hit them right when they're getting ready to go on this big talk shows where they get ready to promote all their we send money to us we do all these great things stuff well that's when we're going to hit with their own recordings with their own mouth with screenshots showing that all the phones were recorded all the calls were recorded on my call that for our families they know i've gone through this so many times with people every time god sends us on a mission you got people the devil comes in like crazy we're very well established we know how the enemy works because i used to walk with them so who better to who better to stomp on them all day
And God can reveal things. And look, if, if you don't know what evil is, if you've never really been a bad guy, you know, then uh, you're not going to really be able to find the people we're looking for. You know? Bravo. We got a team here right now. All right, are there any other questions? You see somebody trying to make money, please notify the page and link the site. Um, any individual that's trying to raise money, no. And if you're saying you're running a GoFundMe, understand, you have to produce receipts that show 100% of what you raise was bought for material support. And if $1 is missing, guess what? Everyone's going to know that you stole a dollar from the children. We don't care if it's a dollar. We're going, well, nope, we're going, everything you're donating is coming right back. We don't want tainted blessings. We want 100% to go to the children. That's it. And, and God's going to work miracles. If everyone keeps their dirty little greedy fingers off of it's stuff. We're out here for people. So if everyone keeps their greed away from this and we get pure blessings, God can work major miracles. You guys got to understand that book is true. So, um, yeah, 100%. Hey, look, for people worrying about the screenshots and, and who, the, who the sex offender is, look, guys, I already told you, not a sex offender. Never committed sex fraud. Hey, if you want to know who I was when I was locked up, you can talk to a warden. They had me in ad sag for a long time because I would put my hands on sex offenders. I was the guy that was taking their coffee. I was the guy that was, like, beating the shit out of them. I was a very bad guy. I mean, more so violent. Like, I would kick the shit out of people. But I was also on a lot of medications. I don't take those medications no more. But um, you don't have to worry about all that. That stuff, the more they lie and when it comes out, that's just going to show. You let them, give them that noose, guys. We're giving them a noose. Let them get it. Let them get it. Let them go get them, son. Because at the end of the day, we're going to yank back on that. <laughs> Their heads are going to be decapitated. They're going to hold no, no, no credibility whatsoever because they're running with desperate lies to try to stop people and say that this is a hoax. This isn't real. There aren't missing children down there. They're saying we said we think it's things that we never said just so they can say that we're hyping stuff up. No, nope. we've been very truthful. We've gone out in a lot of spots and haven't found nothing. And we busted our ass and walked all those hours to find out that there was nothing there. But we found more than we found not. And that's a fact. We found way more than we haven't. Our searches are finding something. I mean, at least seven out of ten searches I send out are bringing back something right now. So worlds of three. If three of them ain't working, then that means God's got this. Because he's just showing us where we don't need to be. So we're coming up to Bravo right now. Here's Major Harrison. We got so many people down here, we actually had to have that other fob. See what you... Uh, you can see what you can find out uh, about this tire Michael called or something. Thank you, sir. coming out. Hey, we're not in a standoff. <laughs> There's not going to be an armed standoff. Your video no, said possible armed standoff. We're no, not going to be in one. Those, Our local authority, yeah. Those were the beginning ones when you when you were up there on the tower. Oh yeah, we're that we were going to be. Yeah, we're not in one now. We're doing yeah. we're doing an official search and rescue. Yeah, so uh, let really, all your viewers know. Yeah, nothing recent. Yeah, right on. We'll get you out to see the new fob today. Ah, uh, they're setting up their basic stuff right now. You just start with a few tents and we slowly build out and expand. So, huh? Oh, we got we got yeah we've got almost all of our uh, equipment to run. A mobile unit out there. Hey, how's it going? I'm Frank. Lewis, thanks for coming out. Hi, brother. Yeah. Hey, can you take them through the camp and walk them through and show people that are new what goes on here and explain what you guys do while we're out doing the search and rescue? This is Major Harrison is going to go. Hi, everybody. These are some, some of our new volunteers here. We're going to start right here at the command hut. There's Allie. She's the colonel. This is our, our the command we run the base from. Alpha team hut. 
right there. We have right now 22 batteries. 22. This is going to be our overlock. This is the caterpillar. This is going to be our kill hut. We're going to have a kill hut recreation room where people can get in out of the sun, watch a little TV, enjoy a little music, our mash unit. This is Pastor John, Pastor John's chapel. Back here we have a couple tents. This infrastructure right here is where Alpha Team has been running out of. But they're moving up to a separate location. Back there we have a shower. This is going to be Fred's new home. He's going to be... He's going to be uh, moving in here uh, throughout the day. Or wood pile. <laughs> kind of a messy right now. The women's tent. One of our women. This is our chill hut. They have, if you can see the uh, solar panels, they can charge their cell phones, uh, chill out in there, get in and out of the sun. Our social barrel. We call that the social barrel. But this is our pantry for our non-perishables we're you know anything that comes in that we don't consume or use for the base and the residents uh, or op daily operations we do send out to the other organizations that serve the homeless our kitchen this is our clothing room we've been getting a lot of donations in for clothing uh, we could use summer clothing. Here comes Pastor John. Wow. This this the homeless come up. They can get cold water out of the uh, room temperature water, which is they can get food here. Hygiene, whatever they need. That's not, I can't have you hang over there in a wheelchair. This, is, this here, we yeah. put books and, and other material that the homeless can enjoy. Uh, a little place for them to sit out, out of the sun. And what we do is we go out in the park, we go out in the washers, we go out in the tunnels, and we look for homeless veterans and at-risk individuals. We bring them here to Bravo Base where they can get their resources, things they need. We are in the process of, as you can see back there, we have more uh, couple tents back there. So, our room off the floor, we can't really use furniture right now. We have no place to store it out of the weather. And this weather here in Tucson, it will get destroyed really, rather quickly. We're preparing for for uh, the monsoons, so we can use boots on the ground here at Bravo Base as well. If you have carpentry skills, that would even be best. But if you don't, just come on out, give us a hand getting us ready for monsoons. As you can see the floor, we're starting the floor in this one. We got a carpenter here that is gonna take this all up and finish it right. Back here, you can see the floor is up off the ground, so the water will run under, under underneath the flooring. And that way, it keeps everybody uh, dry up on top. We're going to do that to all the tents. And back here, we have our tire wall. You know, our tire wall goes up completely around the base. And that is to keep uh, the, the homeless out, you know, at night so that we can have control and security on our base. Our security for our individuals is utmost important. I'm going to give you back to Lewis now. Here you go, Lewis.
golf clubs, you know, something I can just put in the floor somewhere. Yeah, we'll we'll get that over with uh, all right. James. That's all I got, man. That's all your only problem. I do have a trailer right. I can use. I got the Jeep, and I got a Harley sitting out there. He's going to leave the Harley for me. He's leaving you the Harley? Yeah. Oh, man. He's going to donate it to me. Oh, that's great. <laughs> All right, guys. So. There's our carpenter right there that's going to finish our floor. And we want people that are coming in to understand, look, we've got a very good group. We've got a very good council that's set up. We are getting our tactics and everything, and we got everything coming, and we're letting the vets lead this. There are people that are complaining right now saying that they're not being listened to. Listen, you're going to have to listen to the people that are giving orders when you come down here. If you're not willing to do that, then you're not out here looking for kids. You're out here looking for something for yourself, and we want you to go out there and find it. We don't want you down here if you don't belong down here. All right? So there's seven seven more, so that's almost, we're over 200 and probably 227, I'll get the count, 227 volunteers. And there are people coming from all over the country. So keep coming down. Um, we'll stay completely transparent. You can see here where um, as they bring in the donations, you know, they go in. Full transparency. And let the haters hate, because my God's great. Have a good day.